The term death making was coined in order to uh, establish uh, in people's mind a, a, a universal reality, uh, namely that uh, the lives of uh, society devalued people were at much higher risk than that of people valued in society. Uh, if, when you occupy devalued roles, as we said before, then people generally don't want to do good things for you. Uh, they tend to do bad things to you and they close doors on you and, uh, um, and deny opportunities and uh, will not stand by you in, in distress and, and may even uh, do things to you that abbreviate life, sometimes to the extreme of wishing you were dead and, and doing things to make sure that you end up dead. Um, now, people uh, could easily think of discrete bad things being done. <clears throat> Somebody wouldn't get good medical care or, uh, and, um, uh, and, uh, and somebody would, would get into a fight and, and get uh, you know, injured and, 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 um, and they could think of that there, yes, there was such a thing as abortion of, of uh, unwanted babies and of handicapped babies and and there were instances of euthanasia of handicapped people and so on. But they didn't have a unified idea that, uh, that all of these things are contributions, contributions to the uh, abbreviation of life and, uh, and that there really is such a thing as uh, uh, the, you know, the bringing on of death uh, uh, unnaturally early uh, and that it needed to be recognized that there was a continuity and, uh, and uh, similarity among all these different kinds of abbreviations of life. And so uh, I was casting about uh, trying to think of, of a word that referred to all of these phenomena. And I fell back on, uh, on a, a German word. Uh, there's a legitimate German word that means as much as death making. Uh, and uh, so I translated that into death making, and uh, um, what is the German word? Todmachen, um, and uh, uh, and, uh, and, and you know, and get people to understand that there's so many, many uh, different ways of abbreviating devalued people's lives, and when you look at <coughs> at their lives, we just look at the obituary columns, it is remarkable how short the lives of so many handicapped people are. You know, die for various reasons in early infancy, in childhood, in adolescence, uh, in young adulthood. Uh, if they grow older, uh, well, the ordinary life expectancy now is, you know, in the high 70s and 80s and uh, soon and uh, and the ordinary handicapped adult, uh, maybe uh, 50s, so maybe 20 to 30 years less life expectancy. And, uh, and people don't notice that. You know, when they see a handicapped person and the person sort of goes downhill in their 50s or so and, and dies, it's sort of taken for granted that that's part and parcel of being, you know, an enfeebled in, in body and health and you, you just die earlier. That's, the way things are, and yet uh, the the fact is that these that these deaths uh, uh, are uh, are the result of things not being done that could have been done uh, to uh, uh, to continue life, and and so we systematically analyzed uh, the, uh, the the mentalities of depreciation of the importance of you know, of uh, devalued people and, and how that translated itself into bad treatment. A lot of that, of course, came out of the normaliz normalization, social role valorization uh, uh, theorizing <coughs> and, uh, and spelled out much more clearly, succinctly and systematically uh, how all of this led to the abbreviation of, uh, of the life expectancy of so many handicapped 
you know, people, you could almost say the average, typical you know, handicapped person. Uh, and uh, so out of that came a body of teaching workshops um, and uh, uh, action proposals and uh, uh, a lot of consciousness uh, raising and um, but um, but uh, the the impact of, of that sort of uh, uh, teaching and thinking and so on uh, has been modest. The fact is that uh, life expectancies of society devalued people are still dramatically lower uh, than they would be if these people occupied valued positions in life. Well, one, one fate of many society devalued people, very common fate, is poverty. But somehow or other, you end up poor, quite commonly, lifelong. And associated with poverty are many, many problems, including uh, problems of health you know, and uh, of welfare that is associated with health. Uh, and uh, out of uh, poor health uh, and poor health care, you know, the poor don't get the same quality of health care, uh, and uh, and uh, all of that increases the risk of of death. And uh, we we can point to dramatic instances where uh, a very very minor injury that would have been a triviality in the life of a valued person can in the life of a devalued person uh, mushroom. One, we, you know, we use the expression, that devalued people can die from a hangnail. Uh, the hangnail leads to the infection, and the infection isn't, isn't addressed, and it goes on and on and on and on, you know, and, uh, uh, and uh, one problem leads, leads to the next, and uh, uh, a poor person dependent on on uh, Medicaid, uh, you know, they, they lose their, their dentures, let's say. Well, they, uh, then they can't eat a lot of things. Uh, it takes uh, Medicaid maybe years to replace the denture. In the meantime, that person has lost 20, 30 pounds and, uh, uh, and it gets malnutritioned and and out of that malnutrition comes uh, an infection, and out of, you know, one, one thing just leads to another. And at the end, you have a cause of death that seems isolated, uh, uh, technical, you know, so the person dies of whatever, pneumonia, or, or in a, you know, some other infection, or, or kidney failure, or you know, you know what. And nowhere does it tell, of course, the story. Why did the person die of kidney failure? What was the antecedent and the antecedent to that and the antecedent to this? And, and ultimately, it died because it was of, of low status in society. And nobody gave a damn about the person. That's why he really died. You know? So, um, uh, once you become observant and sophisticated in this kind of analysis, I mean, it, it's, it's just amazing what you, what you see. And, and how you can reinterpret what is happening to the lives of the devalued people that, that you know of, you know, the people that you're familiar with, and, and, and you, you see what happens in their lives, and, <clears throat> and, and you, you realize when, when there's a minor problem in their lives, that if that minor problem isn't quickly attended to, that it can mushroom or, or catapult in, into a, a lot of big problems and, and which can end up in death. Now, not to mention all sorts of other things, bad things in between. Perhaps we could say that uh, maybe the single greatest danger is that the um, function of paid human services today is no longer a, a uh, benevolent one. It is no longer one to really be of benefit to the recipient. It is one to be of benefit to society. There's a conflict of interest uh, that, uh, that human services today play primarily an economic function to society, an economic uh, 
uh, contribution to to <laughs> to the total economy, you might say, uh, providing employment and and so on, and uh, uh, and not uh, and not one of uh, uh, benevolence and and beneficiality to uh, to, uh, to the people served. So. So you you could you could and in our circles we do posit that the formal, formally funded government funded uh, service system as a whole probably does as much harm as good, and maybe more. Why? Because of that very, uh, very reason. It 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 uh, it needs dependent people. Uh, if you didn't have increasingly large numbers of people dependent on paid services, the economy would collapse. Uh, the economy is dependent uh, on paid human services. Healthcare system alone is now a huge percentage of the grand national product. You know, and if you didn't have all these sick and dependent. Uh, uh, and incompetent people, uh, uh, then all the other people who are employed to serve them wouldn't have jobs, and you would have a great depression. Well, the human services are, in a sense, victim in, in this, of larger societal f economic forces, and then they have no idea what's being done to them, and they have no idea what role they play in, in all of that. It's totally unconscious. They see themselves as, uh, as being beneficent, you know, and it's being very needed, and, and look at the, this sick person, and this dependent person, this incompetent person, this homeless person, and, and this alcoholic person, and this crazy person, and, and they need this service, and that service, and that service, and that, all, all these paid services, they need them, you know, uh, and uh, they don't realize uh, that the need is largely artificially manufactured. Um, for instance, the whole poverty culture, uh, it is uh, people. People are being made systematically dependent, you know. And then when they're dependent, then they end up what's needing those paid uh, services. But but you can see clearly how that need is being uh, created, and uh, uh, how pathetic it is that people who. Uh, from birth would, would have been quite capable of growing up as competent citizens, you know, end up as uh, incompetent dependent citizens. The, uh, the indicators are pretty grim. The indicators are that things will get, continue to get worse, dependency will increase, um, that uh, uh, societal functionality will decrease, uh, that decadence is increasingly being celebrated as the new norm, um, uh, and um, uh, that the, the glues, the, whatever it is that can hold people together in a society, and, and there are, you know, a handful of known societal clues, that virtually every one of these glues is weakening day to day. And, uh, uh, and uh, if, a good example of, of uh, the kind of endpoint of where this sort of thing to, can trend to, you could see in the New Orleans disaster. The New Orleans disaster revealed that what you had down there was a non-functioning community, uh, you know, a community of, of people that, uh, that were largely criminal and non-functioning, and uh, when the disaster came, uh, everything fell apart. You know, nothing worked anymore. Uh, society, uh, the societal structures disappeared, the police disappeared, uh, the people became predatory on each other. Um, and um, uh, um, and this is this is a sort of, uh, as I say, an, an extreme early instance of uh, as things continue, 
uh, that you will see more off, more dysfunctional. Well, we have many, many cities now that are totally dysfunctional. There's there are hardly any functional citizens in those cities anymore. A uh, very peculiar potential source of optimism is if things get bad enough, then people may begin to ask the higher level and the deeper level and uh, more important questions and may, uh, may begin to give uh, correct and uh, valid and rational uh, answers and, uh, and address uh, the problems in a realistic fashion. But things have to get a, a lot worse, I think, before a lot of people will recover reality in our culture, particularly our so-called postmodernistic and constructionistic culture where people get away with uh, uh, pretending that things are the way they wish they were. Well, just imagine if only, let's say, 25% of uh, the population that today is uh, dependent in our society <clears throat> were restored to competent functionality and no longer needed uh, nurses and social workers and rehab counselors and, and uh, welfare payment uh, processors and, uh, and, uh, and attendants and uh, uh, and residential services with paid people, and on and on and on, on like that, the, it would be an economic disaster. Uh, you know, 25% uh, of, of uh, all the people engaged in human services would be out of a job. Uh, and uh, uh, considering how big the service sector is these days, uh, uh, that would be devastating to the economy. So it just underlines, you know, how how dependent the economy is on a, uh, a large and uh, increasingly uh, an increasing number of uh, dependent people. Of course, in the long run, that is unsustainable, uh, and uh, um, and uh, it, it contributes to the kind of economic uh, disaster that we've recently seen. But uh, the problem is not recognized. Even economists, uh, the, the gurus, are, are not aware of what it means to have an economy that no longer produces anything and uh, in which everybody is engaged in essentially unproductive paid work. That is, it just has not sunk in that this is not a viable long-term arrangement and that that is in part behind uh, the recent disasters that we have seen, which, um, which has only, only begun to play itself out.